Hello, this is Daniel. In this short video, we will be talking about Node Space, a tool we have been using at Cycloge in the last couple of years for various needs or documenting things and also for exploring things. We'll begin with a short demo just to see what it is about and then we'll overview some of the uses we have been using it for and also discuss a little bit how it relates to other tools and where it is going nowadays. So you see here we have a closure node space and node space is about taking any closure node space and turning it into a notebook experience. Let us see what it means. We have the wrapper running, so we can uh, evaluate and we're evaluating this, uh, these main API namespaces of namespace. Now let us initialize. What I'm doing is calling certain API functions and we can also call them by some key bindings in the editor, but just to demonstrate I'm doing it this way. So you see it is initialized now and the browser is listening to our interactions. Now uh, let us add some code to our namespace. And we can ask namespace to evaluate it. And what we see, you see, I use the key binding instead of calling this function, which is just the same. And we see that we're getting a document. We're getting this document that has our code and the outputs also, right? And it can also have some text in it. And I'm evaluating again. And it updates, right? And we can keep going and evaluating and changing things and evaluating and it is kind of playful and dynamic. And so we're seeing two things here. One is this approach of so-called literate programming, termed by Donald Knuth. This idea of documenting and coding at the same place and time. Right? And another thing we're seeing here is dynamic, playful data exploration. So these are the main needs node space is about. Let us continue a little bit. Another thing we can do here is specifying kinds of things. There is this idea of metadata where certain kinds of things can be specified. And for example, let us say this thing is hidden. So it is hidden now. And let us add another thing of a hiccup kind. So hiccup means, you know, this way of creating HTML as a data structure, right? which is so common in Clojure. Right? So we have this hiccup working. And let us, let us add a little bit more. And we now see that hiccup can be extended with additional tags. And we we'll use something like uh, uh, something that is kind of pointing to a certain library called Sparkline for data visualization. Let us put some data here. And let us evaluate. And you see, we get this plot. And so there are two things we're seeing here. One is specifying the kinds of things, and another one is this way of extending hiccup. We are doing it using something called Gorilla UI. It is part of the pink Gorilla ecosystem by Andreas and Florian. And this is part of the current rendering engine or no space. Just for fun, maybe let us name the data more detailed. We can create some source of randomness. 
and making it center the round zero and let us use it repeatedly and aggregate the partial sums of it right so we get this random walk and we can play with it make it shorter and so right so that was a short demonstration of how we can use Nordstedt. And, and now um, let us let us uh, maybe mention a few more uses of it we have been uh, using. And so uh, let us first mention that no space is now part of a bigger project called Cycloge Tooling. Uh, is led by Sami Kalinen. And I'm so hopeful about this project, which is going to decompose our current stack of tools in a more composable way. And we'll comment about why it is so important in a moment. Yeah. And yeah, so, so uh, Cyclogenel is a machine learning library, a new library by Carsten Bering, really promising, really wonderful in many ways. And it has been documented by NodeSpace. Actually, I really like this documentation. And you can see these docs generated actually as closure namespaces using NodeSpace. Another thing is this older example of Clojis, a uh, library for interop with R. One interesting thing about this talk is that it is testable. You see, it is having tests. So we can see them in the body of the text. Things are being tested, and in this case, passing, you see. So it is, uh, we are not only documenting libraries, but we are doing them in a testable way. So the doc is also the tests. In other words, we can say that we have literate testing. Another example is this collection of examples that Tomasz has created. And uh, maybe let us just look into one of them. This, uh, reach reach line uh, plotting method that uh, Tomasz has created a few beautiful examples for. Uh, so let us add in a visual, or maybe that deserves, yeah, in a visual testable way. And data visualization is, in general, a need that Node Space has been answering in various ways. Uh, we have been having study sessions. A lot of them, usually a few sessions a week. And uh, most of them are not shared publicly, but this one was recorded. And uh, you may like this video as a way of tasting how our study groups uh, work sometimes. And it is also a nice demonstration of no space. And yeah, here is uh, some data exploration we have been doing with some. Uh, geospatial data you can see we are looking into the data and visualizing it in a map and coloring it and looking into tables and all that and this thing was created in a very dynamic way as a process of exploration and now it is shared so we are talking about sharing explorations By the way, this is the code. You see just a regular closure namespace. Not, nothing special about it. Yeah, and another thing is the handbook. Actually, a, a big group of different community members have been com uh, contributing to it. It is a collection of tutorials in various, various aspects or using closure for data science, data exploration, scientific computing and all that and data processing. And it has been written using NodeSpace. 
Now, maybe let us mention a few other projects uh, that are very much interesting, uh, probably more than node space. And they are all related to this idea of a namespace as a notebook, as we like to think about it. One is the famous OZ. OZ is, uh, has been there a long time before Node Space. In, uh, it is very much polished and beloved by community members, and it is very much uh, friendly in its experience. Really, a wonderful way to create documents and visual things in a dynamic way. And eventually, it has adopted a very similar concept to how we describe document with a namespace as a possible source of truth for it. Another thing is Clerk, an upcoming library or and tool by a Martin Kavala who has presented it uh, uh, recently. And we are really eager to see it coming because it is going to be wonderful. Another one is Goldly. Goldly is actually more than that. It is a lot of things. It is part of the Ping Gorilla ecosystem uh, by Andreas and Florian. And nowadays, mainly by Florian, who is building Goldly as the main entry point for the user, which is a lot. It is about building interactive data visualizations in a very expressive way with a very elaborate setup, which is actually fun and lightweight to use in a certain modular system of different visual components. It is a lot. But among other things, it is also adopting this node space is sorry this idea of a namespace as a notebook and i'm mentioning all these tools because we are looking to uh, create a layer of compatibility where uh, node space will be uh, able to uh, play with other tools in a sense so we are looking into dialogue across tools and we have been talking a lot uh, all the people i've been mentioning and others are so wonderfully happy to talk and we are trying to think how to make an ecosystem where things compose well and that relates a lot to what we discussed earlier about sharing explorations we wanted to be able to for everybody to easily share things in a way that everybody else can pick them and continue exploring. And when we are talking about this, it makes sense to think about the different tools in the ecosystem so that if somebody is using one tool to do something, another person will be able to use another tool. And then some compatibility across the tools is needed in terms of uh, specifying the kinds of things kinds of rendering as we saw earlier and in specifying uh, uh, visual interactive components right so these things can be hopefully defined in some standard ways that um, that will be available across tools and so these are some some uh, of the current challenges we're looking into. And uh, another current challenge is uh, making is uh, easy the creation of uh, uh, literate tests for libraries. That is actually very important because at Cycloge there is actually a big group of people who are willing to contribute and the more experienced library authors are very much friendly to contributors and we wanted to make it easy for a person to look into a library add a possible feature like a new function and then add a few code examples and these code examples should turn into both unit tests or integration tests and a document a tutorial a doc stream so we want a, a very easy flow of adding something that will be documented in a testable way we also want to, to make uh, things uh, seamless to use. For example, editor agnostic. You saw earlier 
that NodeSpace has some key bindings in Emacs and by the way, also in other editors. So it is needed to, to make this easier, to make the, the integration layer with the editor as seamless as possible, as thin as possible, maybe even not having it to exist. So that is another thing we're exploring different ways for. And uh, another thing is making the flow as similar as possible to the usual flow of editor and REPL. Closurians are using the editors and REPLs in a wonderful way with so much flexibility and simplicity and power. We don't want to replace that. We want tools that embrace that. NodeSpace and the other tools we were mentioning are trying to do it in different ways, but I think arguably all of them are still changing something about the flow of things and possibly losing something. And we hope to find ways that flow better with the existing uh, uh, use of the editor and the REPL. I think Goldly has been doing something interesting by uh, listening to the and REPL uh, protocol. And we are trying to do it too at NodeSpace to just listen to the existing process and update the view in a dynamic way without interfering too much in the flow. Yeah, so uh, that, that is uh, uh, a little bit about the current challenges and current hopes. And yeah, I'm so hopeful about this new Cycloge uh, tooling uh, uh, project uh, by Sami and about the dialogue with other tools, authors, which have, you know, who they all have been so helpful and kind. And uh, I think we're building a nice ecosystem where actually uh, there is a lot of dialogue and that matters a lot, I think. And I hope uh, to get some feedback about this video. If anybody wants to try NodeSpace out, I'm happy to discuss it and help if any help is needed. And uh, in general, uh, any comment or question or I hope uh, that you may say will help a lot. And you're also encouraged to join our different uh, study sessions. We have one-on-one -on -one sessions and group uh, weekend sessions in the community where we are learning the stack together with some data problems we're uh, tackling. And it will be wonderful to see you there at uh, Cycloge. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for this, uh, uh, your kind listening. And um, I'm uh, uh, hoping and wishing you all the best and take care. See you.